So welcome in this session. In this session, we're going to be talking about simplify user management in Airflow. But before kicking off, I'm just going to introduce myself so quickly. So my name is Vincent. I'm a senior software engineer for AWS. I work for a, a team that is just doing open source for, for Airflow. So essentially, my job is to contribute to Airflow, uh, which is cool. And I'm also uh, sorry, and I'm also an Apache Airflow committer. So let's start by setting some context. So the concept of uh, simplified user management has been introduced in Airflow 2.9 with the completion of uh, IP56. Before 2.9, the user authentication and authorization was handled in Airflow to a module called Fab Security Manager. And actually, even though the um, user authentication and user authorization was handled by this uh, Fab Security Manager, all the code related to this function were all over, all over Airflow code base. Since 2.9, all the code related to user authentication and authorization has been moved and packaged into one class called Fab. Um, and it, also, it has also been moved from core Airflow to a new provider that has been created for the while working on it, which is the Fab provider. A new interface as well has been created to, which is the auth manager, the auth manager interface. And this interface defines basically what an auth manager does. So what is an auth manager? Two things to remember. First thing is an auth manager is basically a subclass of the inter interface we just saw before, the auth manager interface. And the second thing is this auth manager is re responsible for two things, user authentication, which means basically whenever Airflow needs something related to user authentication, it will use the auth manager to, to do so. So if we take an example, if Airflow needs to know whether the current user is logged in or not, the web server will simply use the auth manager and call the isLoggedIn method available from the auth manager interface to figure if the user is logged in. And same for get user, which retrieved the current user, so on and so forth. So the second, the second thing the um, auth manager is responsible for is user authorization. So pretty much the same as user authentication. Whenever the web server needs to do something related to user authorization, the way it works is the web server call uses the auth manager and call one of the methods to do so. So if we take an example again, if you go to your Airflow environment, and you go to the index page where the DAGs list, basically, and you click on one of these DAGs, you're going to get uh, redirected to the grid view, so just uh, information related to the DAG. Uh, but one of the first actions uh, Airflow does is checking whether you have access to this DAG. Uh, so to do so, the web server simply calls isAuthorizedDAG, which is the method available in the auth manager interface. And this method will simply just return true if you have access and return false if you don't have, if you don't have access. There's multiple methods to do this kind of checks. You have is authorized variable for variable, is authorized view for the view, same for connections and so on. You also have filter permitted DAG ID, which is a method to filter in resources you have access to. So again, if we take an example, if you go to the index page of your flow environment, and see the list of DAGs, you're going to see on only the DAGs you have access to. And the way it works is the web server calls this function to filter in only the, um, the DAGs you have access to. But why an auth manager? Why creating this concept of auth manager? Basically, we haven't done anything. We haven't created, creating, created any new feature. The, there's no change for the end user. So why doing this? Why we, the only thing we did basically is moving code around. So why doing it? So the reason why we we want to have the the concept of auth manager is we want to plug and play other auth manager if we want to. So in this example, by just setting the config on the right, we are no longer using the fab auth manager as auth manager in the in your environment, but we we're, we're going to use a new new auth manager which is auth manager x hypothetical auth manager. But if we take a more concrete example, we can imagine a key clock auth manager. And so key clock service would then be used by the Airflow environment 
to authenticate you, the user and to perform authorization requests. And as a deployment manager as well, uh, you will no longer go to the Airflow environment to manage the users and the permissions, but you will go to the Keycloak service directly. Which basically means, as I mentioned, the deployment manager will no longer have to manage the permissions in FAB. So you might, you might recognize this screen. This is how permissions are mapped to a role in FAB. So as you can see, it can be, it can become a bit cumbersome. So to create a role or to, to define a role, basically, you need to list all the permission you want to associate to the, to this role. So if, for example, you want to create a role, um, that gives all permission but one, you're going to have to select all the permissions besides the one, besides the one you don't want to give. Um, another limitation of FAB is, uh, you don't have the notion of tenant or team. So you cannot define different group, um, such as marketing or let's say reporting and assigns permission given these groups. So given this limitation, we might want to leverage why we created the concept of auth manager at the first place, use a different auth manager. So here we're going to look at a different auth manager with the AWS auth manager. So here the, we are going to see what the auth manager, AWS auth manager uh, offers, but more importantly, we'll see what using an auth manager different than FAB would look like. So short description on how the AWS auth manager works. Uh, it uh, leverages two services. You have the AWS Identity Center to authenticate you, the user. Uh, you have the Amazon Verify permissions uh, used for authorization. So um, as a deployment manager, you will go to AWS Identity Center to manage the users or, and group of users. And you will go to Amazon Verify permissions to uh, manage the permissions. So let's look at what the logging experience is when using the AWS Auth Manager. So you just uh, go to your environment, and because you're using the AWS Auth Manager, you no longer use the um, logging form uh, provided by FAB, but use the logging form uh, provided by Identity Center. You uh, input your credentials, and because those credentials are valid, you then uh, are redirected to the Airflow environment. Uh, so that was for the authentication. So how the authorization works. So as I mentioned, uh, the authorization uses uh, Amazon Verify Permission, which is a service in AWS, to do some authorization requests. And underneath, underneath, it uses CDAR language, which is used to define permissions. So we're going to go through four different examples on, of how to define permission in Amazon, Amazon Verify Permission using CDAR. But just be, before doing so, let's just quickly look at how a permission is defined in, in CDAR language. So you have basically three lines. The first one is the principle, basically the who. And the second is the action. So what kind of action the user is, is doing. Read that, create connection, delete variable, stuff like this. And the resource. So what is the resource the, the, the user is trying to access? So as first example here, we want to give all permission to a group of users. So we're going to say on the first line, so which is actually line two, we're going to say principal in Airflow group admin, which means basically any user that belong to the group admin. And then after, if you look at line three and four, we don't set any constraints on action and resource. So we basically allow, allow everything. So this policy basically means any user that belong to the group admin can do any action on any resource. So we basically give all permission to a group of users. As a second example, we want to give that specific permission to a group of users. So here we're going to say any user that belong to the group marketing can do any action, but only on the resource marketing DAG. Uh, the third example is here we're going to set some constraint on the action. We want to give read-only permission to a group of users. So in order to do so, we're going to say any user, same stuff, any user that belongs to the group viewer can do this list of action, which is can read connection, can read DAG, can read 
pool, can read variable, can read data sets, and can read the view. And we are not going to set any constraint on the resource because we want basically to give read permissions to all resources to a group of users. And as a, as a last example, so far we've only used permit on the first line to define all these, all these policies. But you can also define policy that works all the way around. So instead of defining policy that grants access, here we're going to set policy that forbid access. So here we're going to say, it's again an example, here we're going to say, if the principal is this specific user, this user won't be able to do any actions on this specific resource, which is like a hypothetical secret DAG1 uh, DAG. And ob obviously you can uh, define multiple policies, so we can imagine this user belongs to the group admin, which will mean this user has basically all permissions, but with this, with this policy, this one, this user, even though it belongs to the group admin, won't be able to uh, do any action on this secret DAG. And just as a last example, so I lied a bit, there's five examples. We'll look into the future of it. This example is not possible today. Don't be too excited, but it will be when the airflow will be multi-tenant, but it's an idea of what could look like a policy in a multi-team environment. So here we say, so here we introduce the concept of team and DAG folder. So here we say, if the user belongs to the team marketing, this user can do anything, can do any action, because we don't set any constraint on the action. So, so the, if the user belongs to the team marketing, he can do anything, as long as the resource is DAG, and this DAG belongs to this DAG folder. So by setting a simple policy like this, you can easily define permission to groups within your Airflow environment. So again, this is not possible today, but as soon as Airflow will be multi-team compatible, you could define such policy. So that was basically an overview on AWS Auth Manager and an example of usage of a different Auth Manager than Fab. But before closing this talk, I'd like just to look a bit in, in the future and see what Auth Manager will look like in Airflow. So one of the important items of Airflow 3 is getting rid of FAB. And since we want to remove FAB from Airflow 3, we need to find a replacement from FAB Auth Manager, which relies heavily on FAB. So the direction we are taking is basically implementing a new, a new Auth Manager, a simple Auth Manager, that will become the new Auth Manager in Airflow 3. So the implementation of this simple Auth Manager is very basic. It's only intended to be used for development. Everything beyond development should use other auth managers, such as AWS auth manager, but there can be key clock auth manager, cast door auth manager, like any, the, the list can go. One important thing though is key clock auth manager, cast door auth manager, which I mentioned, do not exist today. So it's actually some kind of call for action. So if you're interested and want to contribute and, I don't know, want to just have fun with Auth Manager, feel free to, I don't know, show your interest and, and yeah, and just express it on any Airflow community, on Slack, on GitHub, on whatever, and uh, I'll be happy to help because we need this Auth Manager for Airflow. And last but not least, the Fab Auth Manager will also be an option in Airflow 3, so you will still be able to keep using it in Airflow 3 if you want. Thank you.